Hey guys, so back again as promised with a follow up video. So, what I've um, I'm going to do this in two parts, there's literally two parts to it. There's the, um, the small module that I've kind of took from the breadboard and uh, put in these small strips. I'm not a huge fan of these, but it's just I've got to do seven of them, and I think these are probably going to change in the future. So, I've just used these in. I've actually even went as far as for the um, the opto isolators. I've just got them in sockets, so rather than permanently solder them down. And the AT Tiny, I've done the same, and that's purely because um, for ease of programming as well. <clears throat> so down below, I'm going to have a Fritzen diagram, um, so you can see the circuit layout on that. But it's pretty simple. Um, the way this works is the cell that you're monitoring provides power. Um, the beauty of the AT Tiny is it's got a, a pretty wide range um, of operating voltage. Um, so if I just flip this over, um, not the prettiest solder in the world. Um, there you go. Um, so, so you're basically taking the positive and negative from the from the battery. Um, yeah, coming straight in, um, and that's the only two connections you're getting off the battery itself. Um, and that's just basically the VCC and ground pin and that's what's powering the chip um, one important thing you do need to do is to calibrate the reference um, what I'll do is I'll switch to the PC and I'll run through the calibration on that um, each AT Tiny is different as far as the 1.1 um, volt internal calibration so you need to do that individually which is a bit of a pain but it allows you to get better results um, <clears throat> from that we're using one of the pins on the AT Tiny to then connect a 330 ohm resistor um, to the input on the opto isolator which is a 4N25 um, so that's feeding in there and then there is also a connection of ground to the ground input pin on the opto isolator. So that's everything on kind of what we'd say the battery side. Um, and the idea of the opto isolator is that it does isolate the battery from what's monitoring it and um, the circuit on the other side. So that means when you've got the batteries in series, um, it doesn't matter um, what's connected to what. So if you're gonna have in my instance I'm gonna have seven batteries in series. Um, but that's fine and it works okay. I need to make more of these boards so I've only made two two of them so far um, but I have used the two and made up a small battery holder here um, and basically you be able to tell by the, the connect, interconnections here um, that, that could be a 4S pack but I've just done 2S but the principle works from 2S up to 7S um, I say up to 7S because you've only got a limited amount of inputs on the um, ESP chip which I'll get on to um, so from the opto isolator <coughs> on the output side um, I've got two resistors in series and I've got another 330 ohm resistor and a 47 ohm resistor um, these might have to change and if anyone's got any better ideas or input that'll be fantastic um, and that then correspondingly goes through to one of the pins here and then we have a <coughs> VCC and a ground pin uh, for the opto isolator um, and the reason for that is to power the opto isolator from the um, ESP side for me or you could use an Arduino or anything like that so for each of these modules you're going to need three connections um, there's only one of those pins is really unique on the ASP um, and that's for the data connection the other two are just basically ground and VCC so that's that module um, quite simple and there's a bit of space left on the board here I may look at um, something for balancing if I can retrofit a MOSFET or similar in a power resistor onto here I could do that if not I might have to to all the components off and reuse um, but because I've used sockets for the um, for the IC and for the opto isolator that at least means I can take them off and not damage them if I've got to put a decent bit of heat through to, to get them off 
Um, it's not the end of the world, but it'll be nice to reuse the components if I need to. Um, so yeah, so uh, down below I'll put a link to the opto isolator, um, just in case it's needed. Um, I did spot when I was looking that there was white or black one models. Um, for some reason, white was the cheapest when I was on eBay or Korea UK. If anyone knows if there's any difference, please let us know. I couldn't actually say any difference on the data sheet or anything like that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty simple. So what we then do is um, we take the signal that's been <coughs> output from the AT Tiny and read by the opto isolator, um, and then output that on the data pin. Now one thing that you have to do is um, there's map function used, which kind of um, scales the output for want of a better description um, down to zero to two five five. Um, which so you lose some accuracy on that, um, but I'm more looking at monitoring for things if they get wildly out of sync. So rather than um, yeah, rather than the minute changes at the moment um, for the balancing side, that might be different, but you know I can kind of address that down the line. At the moment, I basically want to get something I can monitor. It's going to be fairly manual, you've got to go to a web page, um, but that's not the end of the world. Okay, the second part is the Wemos D1. Um, and basically, I can take this apart. Um, what we have underneath. You don't have to use these. Um, you could use a different ESP. Um, you could even use uh, an Arduino if you want. I'm basically wanting to use the ESP just for the obvious of the Wi-Fi functionality. Um, but the nice thing about these little baseboards is that it allows you to stack them up, and you have two by side, side by side, without getting a huge tower. Um, on one side, I'm kind of thinking ahead, and I've got a DHT um, 11 here for monitoring the temperature. So this is going to be sitting in my battery box outside um, the enclosure. So it'll be good to read the humidity and the um, the temperature in there. Um, I can just put that on the web page as well. Um, and this top board is a LiPo um, battery hookup for it. And so then you would feed the power in through here and you've got the battery and that would kind of make it work as a UPS mode. So the idea is that this whole this setup here that I've got my hands, the SP is going to be powered off the main battery pack itself. Um, so then if there's an issue with that battery pack, at least if I've got the light one here, um, it can get powered by that, which is great. Um, that's the plan anyway. Um, on the other side of the boards is the Wemos, DY, Wemos D1 Mini itself. Um, great little board. Now you do get a choice of um, header pins, it's pretty good with these things. Um, they give you both male and, and female um, but what they also give you is these long legged versions and this is designed for just as you can see there soldering straight through the board and that is what gives you the ability to stack these boards up um, so, yeah. so that in itself would be enough and then you can connect in manually and what I'm doing is I'm using from D2 um, three, through to D8 uh, for the connections. What I have done is left D4 clear um, because that's what the DHT11 uses. I haven't put the code in for that yet but I wanted to plan ahead. Um, so instead of D4 I'm using D0. Um, and then what I've done is you can buy these little proto shields um, for the Wemos setups. And all I've done is basically done three rows of headers um, and then the idea is as you can see here um, each module board and what I mentioned was you need a VCC, a ground and then a data signal um, so on here correspondingly if you can make it out there's two solder lines down here if I try and get that up there apologies for the focus so um, I've soldered a whole line of the pins together um, in the centre that's ground and on the right hand side that's VCC and I've just linked those through here 
um, to the 5 volt and the ground pins there. Um, and then I've used these tiny jumper wires um, as I mentioned and basically it just goes down the line so D2, D3, I've skipped D4 as I mentioned so it's D0 and then 5, 6, 7, 8 and that gives you your 7S connection. Now I'm saying 7S, yeah, I think there is another um, digital pin um, that you could use but I've got 7S but for those that have got 14S um, you've either got the option of using something like two of these or um, there is a um, multiplexer that you could use but that will need some different wiring and core changes and actually the chip wouldn't fit on this board not the end of the world you can just put it on a, um, a different type of board but with that the beauty is just going to need those three connections straight onto the board and then that would go into the other module and then you just do that for all the subsequent modules um, so what I'm going to do is I'll make up some cables um, coming from my from, from these small boards um, in the battery um, case I've got and then can uh, route them to the, the relevant lengths and then that basically makes up a nice little module um, it's not too huge but the idea is um, I've mounted everything on DIN rails so um, you get some screw hole mounting points so I'm going to try and make a 3D print a DIN rail mount and then these would just screw onto that and then clip onto the, the DIN rail and then that's just secure and end ready um, and then I'll just feed it with a micro USB power in um, hide the battery there at some point as well and then that micro USB in will be fed from the main battery pack itself so it's 24 volt battery pack so I'll just have to have some kind of uh, step down adapter or something like that so yeah so that's the the crux of it um, what I'll do is I'll switch into the code and I'll go through the code um, it is very rough and ready um, borrowed bits and pieces from here and there um, as I mentioned in the introduction video um, there was two main projects I've been looking at um, and so there's a lot of heavy, heavy borrowing from those so I've um, credited the, the guys there um, but this should work and it basically the code when you go to the web page it will um, check if there's an input from the cells one by one um, and you can see that by if you hook this up to your PC um, and the Arduino IDE and then set the serial monitor so when it's running and it boots up it'll say it's booting connect to the Wi-Fi it'll tell you its IP and it'll step through the cells one by one test them um, and it displays a number one two whichever ones it's detected so technically you could plug in one in cell four and it would sort of show one and four on the web page so you can see there visually um, and then what it'll do is it'll display um, well you can, I think I have made it so that it just shows the, the voltages um, using a serial print statement and goes through but basically the idea is that once you know which IP it's on um, then you can go to that um, that web page or that IP in a web browser I should say um, and then what it'll do is it'll show you the, the voltages of those cells and then it knows how many cells they are in total and so it'll show you the total voltage of your pack as well. Um, it's not measuring the pack voltage as a whole. All it's basically doing is taking those individual voltages and just adding them together. Um, so nothing fancier than that. At the moment, that's all it does. It's quite passive. It's not going to auto alert or anything like that. There is some code, like what well, I would say, not legacy because it's not all, but it was some code left in there that um, from. Um, one of the guy's examples um, of how he was doing it because it was for an electric bike um, but I've just left it in there commented a lot of it out so it's, it's not being used at the moment um, the idea is I have looked into there is a um, possibility of sending an automated email um, once the pack reaches either a certain high voltage or a certain low voltage um, that's probably what's going to be most useful for myself so if a particular cell gets to a certain um, limit say 3 volts or 3.4 or something like that um, you can get an email alert that comes through um, I'd probably actually be looking to set that on the higher side um, 3.5 something like that, 3.4 and then that would give me enough time even if I'm not in the house when I come home and just say alright ok there's a problem disconnect the pack and then there you go and do it that way 
so yeah, so that's the the plan. I've done a GitHub. Um, I've put the code up. Um, there's Fritzen diagrams there. I've done a Fritzen diagram for for this, like I had it on the breadboard, um, which is probably easier to read than putting something like this up. Um, and then I've also done. I don't think it's necessary, but I've done a Fritzen diagram of the the breakout board for the Wemos um, D1 Mini as well. Um, so yeah, so that's it. Um, the only thing to add is that. What you could do is another alternative measure to, um, if you're doing a 14S pack, is to use something like a, an Arduino, um, one of the larger models that has more pins, um, basically, um, more input pins. So if you can get one that's got 14 pins and you could use that, um, that's going to get into the Arduino, then how you get that information out, you know, you could hook it up to an ESP or something like that. But you just have to um, kind of go that route on your own. At the moment, mine's just a seven S, so that's what kind of what I'm concentrating on. But if anyone uh, needs any help, just uh, put a comment down below, and I'll um, see what I can do. Okay, cheers, guys.